What's up guys? Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. It's going to be kind of like my first voiceover kind of video. Let's just call it my podcast now. So, in this um, podcast, my fingers are doing the quote thing. Um, I'm going to be talking about what I want to see in 1.17. What I know about 1.17, like what's been announced and stuff, and also, um, theories I have. Now, I don't really have very many, like, theories of what else they could be putting in, but let's get right into it. So, the first thing I want to talk about is something that they announced in, like, the very beginning. So, the Lush Cave. Now, the Lush Cave is one of the new cave biomes that we know about. They announced two cave biomes. The Lush Cave and then um, another cave, but I'll talk about that one later. Then they said something about the Deep Dark. We don't know what that those caves are going to be called yet. We just know it's the Deep Dark for now. So the first cave biome is the Lush Cave that they told us about. So the way to find it is you find an azalea tree and climb down it's fine now the azalea tree looks like this okay so i'm going to show you this video it's going to show you what the azalea tree looks like and also what the lush caves look like so the first thing you see in this video that was released by Minecon is that new tree that's the azalea tree it's going to have those purple flowers on it so it's um easy to spot now what you do to find a lush cave is you go down those trees roots and then you'll find this lush cave now there's all sorts of vegetation in it there's glow berries and i'll talk about these later it's not too much to talk about there's these new flowers um there's the little things in the water and there's a new mob that i'm going to actually talk about a little bit later so this is what the lush caves look like Let's get on to what's inside the Lush Caves. So, I'm actually really excited for 1.17. So, some the plants. Now, as you can see, the Lush Cave is full of vegetation, which I actually really like that. I like that they let it keep the old Minecraft Cave aspect, but they also added a new touch to it, you know? There's going to be, like, normal cave generations there's going to be all sorts of small caves large caves tall caves long caves all sorts of stuff and then there's also new cave biomes and other stuff i'll talk about later so the first new plant is the drip leaf now the drip leaf is that one that you saw that was like that tall um the tall kind of lily pad welcome to unbeatable gaming's plant session so I'm just going to quickly go over the new plants. The new plants are the drip leaf. It's that thing in the water you see. It will wilt or kind of tilt down whenever you stand on it for too long. The glow berries, they grow on those vines. They're those little orange dots. You can use them for light or you can eat them. The spore blossom, they emit a spore. You can move them around to emit the spore around your world and other places. And that's pretty much it. Back to you, other unbeatable. Thank you, Unbeatable Number Two, for that awesome. Hmm, what do I call it? Hmm, talk about the new plants that we know of. So, the next thing I'm going to talk about, I don't have too much on this one, are the dripstone caves. These right here are the dripstone caves. Now, some things about them. So, as you can see, there's stalactites and stalagmites. Now. Um, a way to remember them is stalactites are the ones on the top because they have to hold on tight. Stalagmites are at the bottom. I don't know why. So look, they have kind of a cactus effect. You break the top one, they all fall. If an enemy falls on it, it will hurt them or kill them. So as you saw in that video, those, um, stalactites and stalagmites, well, the stalactites, they were, they had little drips, you could see, right? So those, if you put a cauldron under the drips, it actually slowly fills it up. So that's just another little feature they added. Now, for the next thing. Now, this part, you can find them. They're pretty rare, the amethyst geodes. Things you can get from them are the crystal shards, which will grow on these crystal generating blocks. You can't move them, though. 
which will kind of inspire players to kind of make things like around the world and stuff. On the very outside, it's a block called Tough. On like kind of in the middle, it's Calicite. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. And um, so there are some of the blocks in there you can get. I'm pretty sure the Amethyst block you can get. The one that grows the actual geodes. Or, like, the crystals, which you can break to get crystal shards. You cannot break those and take them around your world. Now, crystal shards are used to make, um, two main things. So, the first thing is tinted glass. Now, it's really good for mob farms and stuff. And if you, like, if you still want to see inside of them. Because it does not let light through. So, that's pretty cool. Also, you can make a telescope, which will zoom in. They might make it where it can, um, um, generate, like, more chunks, but we don't know about that yet. So, there's the crystal geodes and stuff. On to the next part. Now, this is what the deep, dark caves are going to look like. Now, those little things are skulk blocks and stuff. I'll tell you about that later. So, the first thing you need to know about the Deep Dark, or whatever they're going to call it in the future, is that that's where the Warden spawns. Now, um, at, like, Minecraft or Minecon Live, they said that there's going to be lots of loot down there. As you'll see a little bit, so there's going to be these candles, which I'll talk about later. There's actually also going to be these little, like, abandoned, like, shack things underground which you'll see in a second right there that's like in a little abandoned shack um we're not sure what um they're gonna look like in the future they might look different we're not sure what kind of stuff you're gonna be able to get there now one big thing you have to know about the warden is he reacts to vibration so look you throw the snowball He'll actually go to it, because he hears it. That goes with placing blocks, shooting arrows, walking. So you have to be really quiet, because this mob is really strong. It can kill you in two hits with full netherite armor. Now, they might not give it any drops, they said. Because they don't want to encourage you to go and fight it. They encourage you... Well, if you do fight it, they said they might give it, like, a trophy drop just to say you defeated it. But they don't want you to go down and just kill it. They want to add to exploration and kind of get your heart beat up and stuff, you know, when you're exploring the deep dark. So another thing that I talked about a second ago in the deep dark is the... It's kind of a redstone thing. It's called the skulk... S skulk growths. You can find the skulk sensor... Now, this is really cool. So, um, I'll show you that in a second. But, it detects, um, when you place a block. It's kind of like, it has the same reactions as the Warden. So, if you place a block, break a block, shoot an arrow, throw a snowball, any of that, or even walk, it'll detect it, and it can be used as a redstone signal. Now, wool will actually stop that redstone signal. So, if it's surrounded in wool, it'll only go, like, one way as a signal and stuff. So, here's the skulk growths and the skulk blocks. So, you saw those little tentacles. Those tentacles are what actually um, send the redstone signal. So, this is actually the first way to um, make wireless redstone. So, there was also a video that showed... Two skulk sensors connecting. So I wonder what people... Like, people that are really good at redstone are going to do with this. There's so many opportunities with this new skulk block. And on to the next thing. So yeah, you guessed it, copper. So copper is actually... You'll find it in veins and stuff. You'll find it underground. Over time, it eventually turns green. Just like in real life. Now, things you can make with the copper is also the telescope. You need copper, and then you also are going to need the crystal. Now, another thing you can do with the lightning rod, or pff, give it away, the copper is make the lightning rod. This will attract lightning during a storm and stuff, so it's going to be really interesting to see what builders do with it. 
um, because they can make more stuff out of wool, and they can also make more stuff out of wood. Now that, um, your house won't get burned down because of the... I forgot. Oh no. Yes, the lightning rod. I'm so dumb sometimes. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is the other three mobs that they're adding. Other than the, um, what's it called? The warden. So, the first one, uh, I'll save best for last. The first one I'm going to talk about is the glow squid. We all know the glow squid. What I want to see is it drop a glowing ink so you can, like, dye anything that's dyeable. And you can dye candles and stuff so they will be, like, neon and glowing. It'll be pretty cool. And it doesn't glow. Now you know that, if you didn't. Goats. So, first, powdered snow is going to be on mountains where goats are going to spawn. It's like a trap. You, when you step on it, you actually fall right through it. Mountain goats can jump really high and knock you off, um, like, knock you off mountains. So that's going to suck. Now the best for last, the axolotls. So as you can probably see, here's just the pictures they released. And I'm going to talk about, um, the axolotl for a little bit while I'm showing you these pictures. First, it attacks other animals that, like, so you can actually scoop up the axolotl, but first it spawns inside of lush caves. You just gotta know that. You can put it in a bucket, and they actually are really good against fighting guardians and stuff underwater when you're, um, doing, like, an underwater adventure or something. You put them in a bucket, you can let them go, they'll help you fight and stuff. They don't really die super easy because they play dead so other mobs don't attack them and then they start to heal up now sometimes if you they said something about if you have a good enough like connection with them they can heal you so that's something i'm kind of thinking about um you might be able to be healed by axolotls um I don't know if they attack you or not. I'm pretty sure they don't. Why would they do that? Evil. So, yeah. That's pretty much it for that. Even Other than they're going to make mountains snowier now, and there's going to be awesome mountain formations. Now I want to talk about this thing called archaeology systems. Now, first... You go, you find this little excavation site, and there's this little ruin and stuff, and you use this tool that's in a chest called a brush. Now, you use this brush to actually wipe away dust off blocks of stuff. I'm going to show you a video of this in a second. Not this part, but then you can use, you can also find ceramic shards. Then you find a clay pot that's over a little, like, furnace-looking thing. And you can actually put the ceramic shards on the pot wherever you want. And then you light under it. Like you can light under the pot on fire. It cooks it for a second and then makes it permanent. So I'm pretty sure you can break it, pick it up, and place it wherever you want after that. So right now I'm going to actually show you the archaeology system. And yeah. So as you can see, you're going to... It, they're going to look like this, most likely. There's going to be the little tent, and then you can find the brush inside of it. Now, the brush, you'll be able to go down in this little area, mm. or like anywhere else in the world, probably, and just, you know, wipe away some gravel to get stuff. But if you're not careful enough, you can actually break whatever's in there. So on this one, as you can see, there was nothing. But on the next one, they're going to make a grave mistake. Not grave, but very sad. So they're about to dig out this whole diamond block, and then it breaks, because they weren't careful enough. But if you are careful, as they're being right here, then you can actually get other things. So this one's a ceramic, ceramic shard, and you find this little area and stuff. This is where you do all this stuff. There's obsidian stuff down here, so I don't know what's going to happen. So, yeah. So, now that we have those out of the way, um, 
new blocks. This video is almost done. This video was took a lot of planning. New blocks are going to include the candle, which you can put in groups of four. You can put on a cake to actually make a birthday cake. You can light it with a flint and steel, a fire charge, or any other fire starters. Now that we have that out of the way, um, there's also other items are going to be like the... So far, we know that there's going to be the bundle. It can hold up to 64 things at a time so far, and it can stack like anything. The, like, say something goes only to a stack of 16 or a stack of 1, then it's going to take up more space than anything else. Extras. They're adding ore veins. I thought they already did that, but that's what they said. Possible extended world height, if they can. If a shulker hits another shulker with the shulker ball, it can have a baby. You can color candles, any color in Minecraft. For you people that play on Java, lava cauldrons are coming, not obsidian cauldrons, which sucks. That would be kind of cool. And rails and minecarts underwater. That would be awesome. Now, stuff I want is, of course, that new neon or glowing dye from the glow squid. And that's... Pr I want new crops and stuff. That would be cool. Um... I'll be back with other theories and other videos and stuff for stuff like this. And, um, yeah. I will see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed this these kind of videos before I leave. Tell me if you like these kind of videos, because I'm not going to do them. People don't like them, because they do take a lot of time and planning. And, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Like a <laughs>